If you've got your Bible with you, um, turn with me to the Gospel of John, chapter number 1. Um, if I, I guess I don't usually title my messages, but I guess if it, I titled this one, it would be Only God Can. And I'm just going just gonna to list some things that only God can do tonight. There's the, the list of things that only God can do is probably, it's, it's infinite. Right. The, there's nothing God can't do right. would be an easier way to put it, I guess. But I, I want to start in, in, in John, and my first point being only God can create everything from nothing. We, we had the privilege um, yesterday to go and, and see the ark. And, you know, what a, what a, I can't even put it into words. I mean, just to be able to see, you know, the ark and just to see that. But it got me to thinking about you know creation and you know people don't believe the people don't believe in the flood people don't believe in creation and saw this sign in there that says that if I can convince you that the flood's not real I can convince you that heaven and hell's not real and I want to just change that and say if I convince you that creation didn't happen if there's not a creator I can convince you there's not a heaven there's not a hell and that's what's happening today in our society every on every hand it seems like people are just they're cramming evolution down your throat. Sure. You cannot get away from it. But I'm here to tell you tonight that there is one who created everything, and that is God. Genesis 1, 1 says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It says in the beginning, God. So the only thing then in the beginning was God. So he created everything from absolutely nothing. John chapter 1 here says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same the same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. God created everything, everything we see. The, the, the creation itself, you know, that's one thing I don't understand. I, how somebody can say they don't believe in God. Creation itself bears witness that Jesus, that, that God is real, that He created. I mean, man could have never come up with anything. The best that man could come up with is not even not even close to just the the amazing the the infinite amazing creation i mean the stars you can look in the heavens i can't tell you how many galaxies today that they have actually seen but even beyond that there's more and there's more and there's more the creation is an amazing thing that only god could do he could only he's the only one that's able to create everything from nothing the second thing i want to point out the only only god can take the dead and give them life. I want you to turn with me to John chapter number 11. A very, very familiar chapter, very famous chapter in the Bible, John 11:35, probably one of the most quoted verses in the entire Bible, probably because it's so short, but um, John chapter number 11 and let's see. I'm just going to, I'm just going to read um, Thirty. All right, John, and verse number thirty-eight. John there, or Jesus therefore again groaning in himself cometh to the grave. Uh, it was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Taketh away the stone. And then Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto them, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead for four days. Lazarus had been in the grave; he had been dead for four days. Now, I mean, at this point, I mean, this is. It, to the to the human eye, this would seem hopeless. I mean, right. he's been dead four days. I mean, rigor mortis is taking place. I mean, he, he's decaying. He's dead. He's as dead as he can possibly be. And Jesus walks up there and he says, "Take away the stone." Steps up and says, "Lazarus, step forth." He walks up like he'd never been dead. Only God can do that. And and I want to point out to you, we. According to Ephesians chapter number 2, we have been spiritually dead. since the, Until we got born again, we were spiritually dead until the day Jesus Christ saved us. Jesus Christ is the only one that can give us spiritual life today. We, are, we were dead. I mean, that's what Ephesians chapter number 2 says. I'm going to turn there because I'm going to mess that up if I try to quote that. Ephesians chapter number 2. I love this chapter. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and the mind, 
and of the mind, and were by nature the children of, ma the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for oh, yeah. his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. Yeah. They, l listen, when, when Adam sinned back in the garden, he passed upon all man a sin nature right. that has been passed upon every man since for the last some 6,000 years or whatever. And, and only God, only the Jesus Christ, only believing on Him, believing that He died on the cross, only believing that He came and lived the sinless life, that is the only thing that can break that power, that can break that spiritual deadness in our life. He's the only one that can give us life again. It, it's, it's an amazing, amazing thought. And why? Why would He come? Why would He care so much about someone who's dead? Why would he care? I mean, we listen, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. We were dead by our own sins. We are our our, our own sin sins are the reason that we were where we were at, where we were going. We were bound for hell, but Jesus Christ said he saw something in us. Who, who knows what, but he saw something in us and chose us and and he's come down and lived the life and 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 made it so that we could have life again. Number, number three, I just want to say that only God can take the leper and make him whole again. In 2 Kings chapter number five, you read, you read of Naaman who, who, was, who had leprosy. You know, and he was a, he was a wealthy man, he, you know, and he, he didn't know what to do. And then there's this maid says, you know, she talks about, and I'm paraphrasing, but in Israel there's a God, and he is able and he told him, you know, he went to the prophet and he told him, dip in, dip in, the, dip in the Jordan seven times and you'll come, come clean. He won't do it at first. He's like, how? Why? This is just, this is too simple. Salvation is that simple, my friend. Yeah. Salvation is as simple as believing that Jesus Christ died, raised, and rose on the third day. I mean, it's that simple. He made it so simple that even a child can be saved. Salvation is simple. That's how simple it was. And he didn't want to believe it. But, but it's simple. God, a lot of times God makes things simple. You just do them. Right. I, it may seem impossible to us. It may seem impossible in our own flesh. But we've got to remember, greater is He that is in me. Yeah. You know, He is the only one that is able to do this. And He's the only one, that was able, he's the only one that's able to take the leper and make him whole. Listen, He's the only one that was able to cleanse us of our sin nature. He's the only one to make us whole. Now, now we live in our flesh today. We, we live in this, in this flesh. And Romans chapter number 6 deals a lot with that. And I'm, I'm going to turn to Romans chapter number 6. So, I'm, I'm going to start in verse number 11. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey the lusts thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield, your, yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Sin now, now that we've been saved, He has broken the power of the sin nature in our life. We don't have to sin anymore. Now we do, and, and if you will, we deal with the the side effect, as it were, of our sin nature by living in this flesh, our, our mind. It's... The first thing the devil attacks, 99% of the time, is your mind. Right. And if you can get it started in your mind, a lot of times it leads to an outward action. And, and listen, now, he's broken the power of sin in our lives, and we deal with it, but there is coming a day when we won't even deal with the side effects of the sin nature in our lives anymore. Right. And, and, and 1 Corinthians chapter number 15, and... Yeah. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. I'm going to read verses number 54 and following. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruptible, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. There's coming a day when we won't have to deal with the sin nature. We won't have to deal with the sin of this world. We won't have to deal with any of that. Everything will be perfect 
in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a day. What a day that's going to be. I say glory to God. I say even so, even so come Lord Jesus. Even so come Lord Jesus. And, and, and number four tonight, only God can take the blind man and make him to see again. And in, in Matthew chapter number nine, it talks about the blind man. And, you know, I thought about that. You know, before we got saved, we were blind to the things of God. Right, right. We couldn't understand them. Before we got saved, this Bible here is just another book. Right. Couldn't understand it. I mean, it was just another book. The church was just another gathering place. I mean, we could not understand. We were blind to the things of God. But God, because of His great mercy, oh, yeah. and chose to, and, and, and made salvation possible and, and came down to us. None of us found God. God came to each and every one of those that have been saved. He came and He chose us and He made it to where now we can look and see the, un, the, un, I mean, the, the unsearchable riches in this yeah. Bible here. I mean, there, you can... You could fill the world with commentaries on the Bible and study and still never even get close to touching what's in this Bible. It's, it's amazing. But before, but before we got saved, we were blind to that. Only God is able to give us that sight tonight. Number five, only God can walk among sinful flesh and be sinless. There's not a man ever since Adam that has been able to walk in this world and be sinless. Jesus Christ is the only one. And, yeah. and, and in, you know, I, and I was reading and studying that in Philippians, it says Jesus was made in the likeness of men. And then in Romans, it says in the likeness of sinful flesh. Now, he didn't have sinful flesh. No, no. He had a body like we did. Now, he understood the temptations. He understood what it was like to hunger and to thirst. But he didn't have sinful flesh because he lived a sinless life. He was sinless. And per Listen, if Jesus Christ was able to sin... If Jesus Christ was able to sin, had He sinned, we would not have salvation today. It's that simple. If Jesus Christ didn't live the sinless life, like, like the Bible tells us, then we have no hope tonight. But I'm here to tell you, He did live a sinless life. He did live that perfect life. He did go to Calvary. He did lay His life down willingly. Listen, they didn't run down. They didn't tackle Him and tie Him to the cross. No, He laid His life down. I promise you that. And because of that, we have salvation today. Only, only God, only Jesus Christ was able to walk in this sinful world and among this sinful flesh and still be sinless. What, what a Savior, yes. Not chap, and, uh, I'm sorry. Ver, uh, number six, only God can take a man possessed and make him free. Turn with me to, turn with me to uh, Mark chapter number five. Mark chapter number 5, and I'll start in verse number 1. And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when Jesus, but when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice, and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And, they, and, and he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send, send them away out of the country. Now there, was, now there was nigh into the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And, and forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea, and they were about two thousand, and were choked in the sea. And they, and they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that, that was done. And when they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had, and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Only God 
can take a man possessed with devils. Only God is able to do is able to take that man and make him free. And I only God is able to take see before I'm sorry, before we got saved, we were bound by sin. We were bound. We we were possessed, if you will. We we had no choice. We did what we did because it was nature, because of the sin nature that was passed upon us. But Jesus Christ is the he come and he made a way and he is the only one that is able to take and set us free. Um Second Corinthians five seventeen says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, behold, all things are passed away, behold, and behold, all things are become new. Jesus Christ is the only one that's able to take a man possessed and make him free. Listen, and sometimes even even the child of God can get himself to the place where he is almost possessed with something. They get into a spot where they you, you look you look at the prodigal son and and Luke. He, he went off, he spent, and he got himself into a spot. He, what else could he do? He came to himself, the Bible says. I believe he was sitting there, and, and the Lord just kind of spoke to him a little bit. And he thought about it for a minute and said, What am I doing here? Listen, sometimes, sometimes you can get so wrapped up into something that you forget that God's even there. Even as a child of God. I believe that. I mean, some people, you wonder what happened. And and none of us are above that. It's so simple. It's so easy to happen. It starts in the mind and and works on from there. But God is able to take that person. He's able to take them and make them free and bring them back home again. And bring them back home and make them useful for the ministry once again. Listen, only God is able to do these things. God, Jesus Christ, by His perfect life, just and, and God, by just being God, is the only one who is able to do these things. And what, what an amazing, amazing God we serve. What an amazing God we serve. And I just, Lord, I, I thank Him so much for, for saving me. I thank Him for making a way of salvation because I couldn't have done it myself. If it wasn't for him, if he hadn't come and found me, I'd still be on my way to hell. If it wasn't for God, only God is able to do those things. And listen, there's something there's something that I don't know. Just remember, only God God can get you through it. Listen, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I thank him for that. Pastor. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.